Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back. Today we're talking about hammered finish paint, what it is, what it's good for, and how to use it. So hammered finish paint is actually very interesting stuff. It's got some properties to it that you don't often see in paints. So uh, there are a few things to know about it. It looks different depending on how you spray it. And it comes in a couple different formats. You can get some of the more, you know, you used to be able to get pretty much everything in these vintage cap. And uh, I prefer these, but hey, now for some reason, I guess people have weak fingers because they're doing these trigger style sprayers, um, which are harder to clean and everything, but they work and you can get a couple cool colors. So today we're gonna be playing around a little bit with the silver and with, I believe this is copper. Yep. And I'll show you how to spray these, what happens when you put hammered paints on in different ways. And we'll talk about some of those properties starting right now. So before we jump into a demo, let's talk a little bit about the paint itself. Uh, hammered paint can also come in quartz. It can be rolled on. It can technically be brushed on. I don't recommend that, but rolling it on works fine. What you need to know is it dries extremely fast, both in the cans and in those contexts. So if you're going to roll it, it tends to string up really quickly and you get like these little well, strings attaching to your roller as you roll it on. You can thin it to slow it down. Use xylene for that. Don't try and thin it with normal paint thinner. It's not going to work for you properly. Use xylene, that'll sort you out. Uh, and that's good for the larger surfaces, but generally I find that spraying is the easiest way to do it. And I've done some tests between the two because I painted some, some large outdoor stuff, including an awning for a home. Uh, and I found that there's really no difference in the durability between the two. So I generally prefer spraying. Mind you, I say that having, having used the rolling method for that awning because it was just so big that a roller was an easier way to get a nice even coat. The cans do generally come with a fan cap. It's not a very big one though. And like I said, this stuff dries really quickly. You've got to be fairly careful with it. A couple things that you do need to know. It's a very durable paint on its own. It has silicone in it, which means it's not designed to be coated over. Now, people have told me they've coated over this stuff successfully by giving it proper drying time, cleaning it with something specific, probably wax and grease remover, maybe something a little more um, aggressive and then scuffing it, cleaning it again, and spraying clear coat over it. If you're somebody who knows how to do that, if you've had some success, let me know. Comment in the, in the uh, comment section below. Let everybody know how you do that. But I will say this stuff tends to be very durable. It's resistant to damage and scratching generally, as long as that preparation is reasonable. And I haven't found that there's a need to clear coat it. And I'm usually a guy who advocates for putting you know, some clear on there to, to get a little extra protection. With this stuff, I haven't really found that it's an issue. I've gotten a couple interesting effects by spraying other types of paint over these. It tends to pull away in little sections and you know, you can put black over top of the silver, for example, and it gives a kind of interesting effect, but it's not really meant for that. And I do have some concerns about the durability of a finish done that way. But just so you know, there are some cool options there. Ideally, if you're using something like this, you wanna get it done in one coat. You don't really want to be scuffing up in between and trying to put stuff over. You should be able to get proper coverage in one coat. I highly recommend that your base coat be tinted to work with that if you're concerned. So with a silver, you simply use a gray primer, no problem. If you're going to be doing a copper or something like that, again, I think you're going to be fine, but you can always use a brown base coat underneath this, or for example, a red oxide primer, and then you shouldn't have any trouble getting full coverage that looks good in one coat. Let's move into the paint booth and we'll play with these a little bit. I'll show you what happens when you change how heavily you're spraying. We'll have some fun with these. Now, I am gonna be in the paint booth because of the type of video that this is, I'm gonna be narrating, so I'm not gonna wear a mask, but make sure that if you're spraying this stuff, you do wear a mask, wear a respirator, protect yourself, it's very important. I'm only gonna be spraying for a very limited period of time, uh, at a time, and then I'm gonna fire on the paint booth, suck all the fumes out of there, and exit the room and then I'll come back and continue. So I'm gonna be doing my best to protect myself while still having this video work the way that I want it to. But again, if you're doing this yourself, make sure you protect yourself. Last thing before we hop in there, if you wanna help support the channel, we do have the relatively new Angove Guitars t-shirts and the Brad Angove, the BA t-shirts. Uh, I've designed a couple new ones. There are some hoodies and stuff too. It's pretty comfortable, tend to fit. So feel free to check those out. They're available below. Uh, I may, I may also have some hammered paint in the Amazon link in the description, but I'm not sure. And frankly, you can go to your local Home Depot and get it there. So 
you know, unless you really don't want to go out, which I mean, it's 2020, so that might be the case, but uh, you can just simply go out and grab it at Home Depot, no problem. Let's move into the spray booth and uh, yeah, have some fun with these. All right, so we're just gonna play with our silver and copper here and we're gonna be spraying this old baker's tray. I've used it in a recent uh, demo that I was filming. So I'm just gonna put that down. It's uh, a little easier to spray this, what is going on here? Stuff everywhere. A little easier to spray this stuff on a flat surface. You can do it on a vertical surface, but you'll see why. You can get a couple interesting effects. Let me bring the camera in closer here. And we'll just spray on top of these two areas that I already have some paint on. I've got some white base there and some gray primer here. So for starters, on the silver, you'll see it sprays in a fan pattern. We'll start down here. And if I do this just lightly, you're gonna see that this has a very fine texture to it. I'll show it to you after, but it's gonna have a fine pattern. The hammered pattern is what we're going for, right? Like, like somebody took a, a ball peen hammer or a little, you know, an awl type thing and put a bunch of dents in it. That's gonna be the finished look. But you can get a broader form of that texture by spraying it more heavily. Sorry, this is an old can, so it's spinning a little bit and you'll see how it pulls together in the, in the place that it spat. Um, but you're gonna see a much more pronounced texture up there, and I'll show you both of these. I'm just gonna quickly do the same thing with the copper. Assuming this nozzle still works. Do the same thing with the copper, so I'll go over top of this silver. I'm not gonna get full coverage. Like I said, you'll wanna brown underneath. But if I do this with a little bit of extra paint on there. You'll see how that's going to pull apart. Here's our area where we just sprayed it lightly. You can see there's texture there. Hopefully the camera's picking that up okay. Make sure I'm focused, but uh, it's gentle texture. It just kind of looks like a metallic with a little bit of that texture to it. And then if we move over to where I really dumped it on, you can see how much more pronounced that hammered pattern is. So these both look decent but they're a completely different effect, right? I hope I'm not making you guys dizzy here, but you can see the little bit of texture there. And of course that much more pronounced hammer effect over here. And I think you can probably imagine how another type of paint over top of that will kind of pull apart. And if we go down to our copper here, I put that on relatively heavy with that silver base underneath and we've got a very interesting look going on there. Just for the heck of it, I'm going to see if I can find another color to toss on top of here. It's still kind of wet, so obviously this isn't, is not how you should be doing this, but I think it's going to be fun. Let's give her a shot. All right, someone left some of this Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch uh, navy blue in here. This is an acrylic enamel. I have no idea why it's sitting here, but there's a lot of paint sitting here for some reason. Uh, so let's fire a little of this on there. I'll show you guys what happens and see if it makes a liar out of me. We'll give that a moment to pull apart and I'll, uh, I'll show you what we're dealing with. And there we go. So again, I have some concerns about the adhesion on this. I've never done any uh, durability testing on it, but you can see how it's kind of pulling away. And this has only been on there for a few seconds. That might continue to get more pronounced as time pa passes here. So we've got kind of a light texture, which you can hopefully see in the light reflection there and then uh, kind of this starry effect happening, which is pretty interesting. All right, guys, well, time for me to get out of there away from the fumes. I'm gonna go turn that paint booth on and suck all of that out of there now. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That's about all you really need to know for the hammered paint that I can tell. But hey, uh, I'm sure you guys will have questions. And if you do, of course, ask them in the comment section below. I'll do my best to get to them. In terms of waiting to put this over top of another type of paint, I anticipate that'll be one of the questions. I mean, if you're putting it over top of primer, the easiest way to make sure that it's going to look good is to let your primer dry for a couple days, sand it nice and smooth with 600 grit, and then go over it with this stuff. But you don't necessarily have to do it that way. You can fire it right over top of some primer. Just follow the directions on the cans and you should be okay. This stuff also sticks pretty good.
Hope you liked the video. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. I would appreciate it. Helps me out. Remember to subscribe so you can see the rest of my painting tutorials and the projects that I've got coming up. And as always, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Have a good one. See you next time.